And extended outreach project Q225, as we shortened it down to, um, it's kind of the second year we've delivered it on behalf of PCSP. Um, it's an enhanced outreach and attached program. It delivers youth engagement, diversionary activities and drop-in activities in four districts of North Belfast, New Lodge Woodville, Ardoyne and Ballysillan. It's a collaborative project involving five partners. Street Beat, New Lodge Youth Centre, Ardoyne Youth Enterprise, um, North Belfast Alternatives and Ballysillan Youth for Christ. Well, the Extended Outreach Programme is not just about engaging when young people come to us, it's about engaging them in their own space. It's not about intrusiveness, it's about getting in and introducing yourself, saying what you're doing and maybe just listen to what they have to tell you. The Extended Outreach Programme was run for, for 10 weeks, um, every Friday night and Saturday night which consisted of um, Street Beat opening up their building on a Friday and Saturday night for young people to use the services and also for a detached element to it as well. So um, that would be going out in the streets and engaging with young people, um, just really um, ensuring that there is youth provision that they can participate in if they want to. There was, I think, 92 four-hour interventions across the, the district over a period of less than three months. 1,200 hours of youth work delivered across those areas. I suppose that the very nature of it is dealing with the issue of young people um, and their personal safety and the safety of the community in the areas where they operate. So youth clubs are fantastic. There's some really amazing provision, particularly in this area. But youth clubs are membership based. So you need to be a member. One, you need to have your 50p a night to pay over the door. Two, um, you might have been barred. You might not, uh, you know, your face might not fit. Not all youth clubs offer young people what they want. There's some young people don't like being confined to a place that has rules and regulations that they perceive to be, why would I go in there? Sure, they'll only throw me out. Young people were quite sceptical, um, very reserved whenever we approached them. Didn't really want to engage, not much conversation. They didn't really know who we were, but we built up that trust by breaking down barriers that were, where youth workers were based here, come up and see the building if you want. It doesn't have to be something really formal. So it allows young people to explore relationships, allows them to explore facilities, allows them to assess the offer. Um, we've been very lucky, so relationships have developed between a core group of young people and we're hoping that they will be working alongside us from now throughout the summer. I, I, I believe that we need to do more work around, especially with media, because large numbers of young people aren't always there to make trouble. We should actually go in and speak to them and actually find out that they're, they're, they're giving a lot back to some communities. We need to educate a lot of adults that because there's a crowd of young people hanging about, it doesn't mean that they're going to get up to no good. You know, and young people like it when older people say to them, how you going? Because most people dehumanise them. You know, we are informal educators in, in some sense, and I suppose really our role within the community you know, we're not police, we're not exactly, you know, me that authoritarian sort of thing. So we sort of, we would engage young people and, you know, just discuss with them and, you know, the issues and um, maybe if they are maybe causing a bit of antisocial behaviour, it is about then, um, you know, making the right choices, the consequences of the choices, but doing it in our way that isn't threatening or it isn't maybe uh, opposing on the young people that were enforcing anything. The key issues were those which we kind of expected concerns around mental health concerns around drug, drug and alcohol abuse, concerns about just somewhere to go, something to do, issues around arranged fights, issues around uh, transient youth in areas that they're not particularly familiar with. We uh, would have met fortnightly, um, all, so all the port partner organisations would have typically been our line managers and one of the key lead workers like myself uh, and my boss would have attended the meetings. Uh, we would have talked about maybe things that firstly that we would have been discussing as workers, you know, of what we would have done in the past two weeks. We had meetings, we'd done it by email and there was a, a dedicated WhatsApp group chat. So we were on constantly on a Friday and Saturday night. What puts things in context for you too, every, every area has their own problems. <coughs> they're, they're not any different than the problems we're having and it's working in a collective. It gives worker support, but it also lets you know that the potential for something to happen in one area 
won't transfer to another because we're already on it. But just personal conversations, the youth workers, they're, they're trained how to approach, you know, how to engage, how to discuss, how to develop relationships. Um, very often, you know, you, you might encounter a group of young people who will persistently tell you to F off um, every single night, but the, you know, the good youth worker goes back and gets told to F off until eventually the young person goes, right, what is it? And then you've started the conversation. And that's, that's the key role of youth work. It's about trying to find that space whereby if there are young people who are identified as at need, that you can make either identify what the need is or, or help make that change happen. Every Saturday we come and we go to the drop in and like we play games and pizza. It's like like if you're bored on Saturday you can just go and like sit with your mates and stuff. And because like it's always like really cold so you can come in and like you walk. I eat pizza. You mean I make pizza or make cheese. And you get food. Because instead of people being out in the street cold, you can be in here with one good activities. From the boat people smoking a lot. Um people hitting windows and uh, you can uh, take a hit to you one time and you don't want to get hit so you can come in here and be safe and sound. Because sometimes you just need because sometimes the place is bad and then you just need somewhere to get, get away from it. Danger, yeah. yeah. Instead of like drinking well, on Saturday night you just come here. You would want to go to so the people up there. People could be drinking. Windows. Oh, dirty stuff. <laughs> Shut up. Right. Getting <laughs> get chases when they could be in here getting pizza. There's a couple in there now. There is somewhere to light fires. And they'll have a boombox. That'll be the start of the gathering there, but we can't, well, you can get in there if you want to climb the fence. There's a few in there now. Not, not all of them are drinking. You know, there's maybe only a few of them. There's usually more spectators than there is actually drinkers. Yeah. But that, that would be the gathering spot. How's it going, lads? What's happening? Mark, what's the crack, bugger? Still boxing away? Good man. Good man. So this would be like Woodfield Avenue and a park and stuff. And like, there would be, that's the main entrance to the park, but young people can get up and around, you know, and, and go into, I suppose it's out of the way, I suppose, but it's, it's also quite difficult for the police to sort of manage that and stuff. So it's maybe trying to, like this group here, just trying to engage them and see what they're up to and stuff and seeing if they would like to come down to the, these young people would like they were in tonight and stuff so it's interesting to see that they came to the job and then they're on the streets now so yeah this would be another wee hot spot here the staffs oh. sorry. Hi, are you? <laughs> sorry. Well. can we get in that back here is that back here open don't no. know i don't right. know it's closed right. probably closed what's the crack nothing um, well. small, is it? there's uh Jared, I don't always do it. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. There's a couple of pizzas and stuff going on down AYE if you're hungry and you just want to be about to eat or whatever. It's primarily dealing with young people who are out there. You know, it's, you're in a, a very uh, high housing density, compact urban environment, um, and it brings with it its own peculiar set of difficulties and opportunities. But for young people, it's their, their, it's their playground. Um, and there are perceptions amongst non-young people, or whatever you want to call them, that, uh, oh, that, oh, that's trouble, look at these big groups of young people hanging around. But often it is just hanging around, you know, that's where they want to be. They elect to be on the streets in parks. Um, our youth workers are there to uh, work with them, to have conversations with them, to make sure that they are safe, to make sure that there is no risk-taking behaviour or to reduce that risk-taking behaviour. I was a young person myself, probably growing up in, a, in a, an area like the Woodfield. And I suppose really the, the, you know, young people do get these, um, these stereotypes and, and, and therefore then there's a prejudice then that comes with that and there's a label that comes with that. And I suppose really our role in that is maybe trying to get the young people to break that down and, and maybe uh, and try and get them to engage in services in, in, in the area that they live in. Some of them, some of them are happy enough on the street. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's I nah, if somebody was if somebody was lying in a bad way or whatever, yeah. you know, we try and contact parents or try and contact friends or whatever, and try and get their friends to make sure that they get home safe and you know, it's a judgment call really. Yeah. You know, but it's certainly not to take drink and stuff off them. Then they just they, they wouldn't engage with you. They you know, yeah. try and run away from you. Yeah, if you were if you were doing things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing is that we're, we're youth workers. We're not police. You know, yeah. it's 
it's not our job really to do that. It's more to try and connect them up than it is to sort of curtail them or to punish them. One of the big things within youth work, and especially in the area that we work in, there, there is a lot of different youth providers. And I would see that at different times of the day and different times of the week, that there maybe is a gap there. It doesn't seem to be that much of a targeted sort of intervention that right there's going to be youth workers on the streets at this time to this time and they're going to open up a job in from this time to this time. I don't think there is much of that and I would see that that does have a, a big role to play in, in, in the actual engagement of young people though, having the outreach element to what we already offer in Street Beat which would be the drop in. We done a survey about four years ago within the park and one of the questions was what is good about the park and what is bad about the park and young people were saying to us you know we feel lonely sometimes in here but it's the only place we can gather where people aren't moving us on and uh, the majority of young people aren't up to no good they're just looking for that we niche where they can enjoy their friendship right it has been successful in terms of you know how we have sought in terms of numbers and in terms of young people actually participating. It's been a, a, a good service for the area. Um, however, young people have identified that you know, um, they don't understand the whole 10 week pilot program. They don't understand that we get funding for 10 weeks and that's it. For me personally, I would see it that if it was extended ever longer, you know, so it was 20 weeks or if it was 10 weeks here and then 10 weeks in the summer, it might be something to, you know, it would complement definitely what we're doing. It can't be an ongoing pilot. This sort of stuff has to be mainstreamed. The evidence which we can show from the collaboration from the partners, from all the records and the impact, the outcomes and the numbers, the young people engaged, the young people encountered, which is completely different, will show that this is really, really useful stuff. Um, but it can't be turned on and off like a light. Our mission is to, to link young people with opportunity. We want to make sure that these are safe, thriving places for young people to have their childhood, to have good memories, to have opportunities, to be able to broaden their horizons, to make sure that all their needs are catered for. Well, my hope is that young people do make the right choices and, and make the right choices for their life. You know, as young people and as people, we all make choices and we all have to face the consequences of them, whether it be positive, whether it be negative. And for me, it's, it is about building relationships and it is about um, encouraging young people to maybe take that step. Give young people credit let these young people, they're the future. I don't want to be traps in the streets, but they would do it with a heart and a hand, and they're the positive side of our communities.